Here's an exciting update on a story that we've been following for the last two years. A research team out of New Mexico Tech has figured out a way to build a drone that should be able to safely and permissibly fly in coal mines. This is a significant achievement. And I ask my team, hey guys, how confident are you that this drone is going to fly? Mustafa said, 5% and <laughs> the others said 45, the others said, you know, 40. And then I was like, no, as a lead, I, I'm pretty sure you guys did a good job. It's going to fly 100%. <laughs> and if it flies, you guys are going to buy me dinner. And these guys had to pay for my dinner. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's still a lot of testing to do, and things will probably change as the development continues. But for now, make no mistake about it, this is big news. So we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the story and talk with Dr. Padram Roganchi and Dr. Mustafa Hassanalian right now. The problem with developing a drone that will be allowed to fly in coal mines is that it has to be deemed permissible by the Mine Safety and Health Administration, MSHA. The requirements are strict, mainly based around factors that will ensure the drone can fly safely and won't cause anything that could lead to an explosion. It also has to be light enough to fly long enough for a mission inside the coal mine, about 20 to 25 minutes, which means that weight is another factor. Our goal was very simple. We wanted our drone to fly for 10 seconds. That means like we could overcome the weight and we can have the lift. When our drone flew like for, I don't know, 40, 50 seconds, all of us were yelling, yes, we did it. Yes, we did it. <laughs> and then uh, in the second test, we actually could fly the drone for three minutes. For us, that's a huge achievement. For the user, it's not enough. So now we have to sit together with our collaborators and make the drone fly at least for 20-25 minutes. That's considered a reasonable amount of time for a drone to complete a survey or the mapping of an underground coal mine location, for example. So where would you say that we are right now on the scale of, uh, you know, zero being when you first started the, the project, 10 being when it gets uh, let's say 10 is whenever you submit it to MSHA for review. Where are we right now? Seven. Really? Yeah, I wanted to say seven That's as well. Seven? Yeah. Yes. I wanted to say eight, but I wanted to be humble. <laughs> 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 I, I'm very confident now. If you if we had this conversation three weeks ago, I wasn't comfortable, uh, confident at all. But right now, I'm very confident because we did the hardest part. And uh, the rest is what we are very good at, engineering and design. So tell me in that last three weeks, give us an insight into what, what happened in those three uh, weeks. We, we went for testing. We tested and that video that you saw. That was when we went to, to a Spencer Composite company. They hosted us for a week and uh, we tested the drone there. And a, a, a big thanks to them. They, they leveraged all their resources to us the Spencer Composites Corporation in Sacramento, California, is playing a major role in this project. I mentioned earlier that the weight of the drone was a big factor that had to be considered. Well, MSHA has a regulation that calls for using quarter-inch steel when building explosion-proof enclosures for mining. But that would make the drone too heavy to fly. The battery enclosure on the drone will also have to be able to contain a minimum internal pressure of 150 pounds per square gauge, PSIG. So the solution seems to lie in creating a lighter weight composite enclosure that will still meet MSHA's standards. This is what the New Mexico Tech team was testing at the Spencer Composites Corporation, along with David Wetz from the University of Texas at Arlington. Wetz is the expert who has been working on the challenges presented by the drone's battery. Remember, heat and weight 
Those are the two main challenges here. As for the weight, the Spencer Composite is actually six times lighter than steel. As we started to design this type of drones, we know that the main challenge is going to be the weight. So here we looked at two different propulsion systems for these drones. One was through the magnetic couplers and the other one through the mechanical couplers. So uh, we actually did research on efficiency of each system and we observed that mechanical couplers, there are more advantages than uh, the magnetic one. So the heat was a big challenge. So we developed some heat sinks to manage the heat from the motor and the speed controllers uh, towards to the composite so we can manage the heat which is generated by this electronics inside of the enclosure. It worked very well. So we didn't lose efficiency. The uh, proportion system worked well. Uh, we used 16-inch uh, propellers that they generated enough lift for the size that we have envisioned right now for the current design. And here, this is basically a new way of permissibility uh, for the future drone technology. Padram and Mustafa are both equally proud of the team that's working on this project because it brings together several different areas of expertise. There's the mining side of things, the mechanical aspects, the battery work, and the composite design. So, where do things stand right now? You know, we just finished the test. We have a long way to go. We are going to actually conduct destructive testing fairly soon. Uh, we want to have all the results and then submit it to MSHA. Um, we are actually thinking to send a replica of the drone that we developed to MSHA so that they can look at it. But everything will come with coordination of Alpha Foundation if they agree to that and MSHA if they want to look at it and us being able to, to achieve our goals uh, for destructive testing. Because we don't want to send something uh, to MSHA uh, unless we are pretty sure that it works. Uh, we are not there yet, but we are very, very, very close. Padram and Mustafa have about nine months left on their contract, but they'll be asking for an extension in order to have some more time to do testing on the drone. In the meantime, they'll be staying in touch with MSHA, with NIOSH, and with the Alpha Foundation. They'll continue working with David Wetz at the University of Texas at Arlington and with the Spencer Composites Corporation in Sacramento, California. I'll be keeping you updated on their progress. For now though, please remember to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for more mine safety information. For Core Safety and the National Mining Association, I'm Nelson Duffel. Please be safe out there and thanks for watching. Special thanks to Dr. Roganchi, Dr. Hassanalian, their team, and to the Spencer Composites Corporation. To share one of your safety stories, videos, or photos, email us at info at coresafetytv.org.